Um, first, I want to thank you all for being here. Obviously, this is a subject that is very, very important to all of us. My name is Terry Van Dyne, and I am the senator that represents uh, most of Buncombe County. Um, last night, Governor McCrory made it clear in his State of the State address that he wants North Carolina to be a state that welcomes teachers, that he wants North Carolina students to be able to compete in a global economy, and that he wants to close education gaps so that our students can find good jobs. And while everyone here shares that vision, it simply does not address the absolute state of devastation that we find in our public schools. North Carolina is currently ranked fourth, 48th, I'm sorry, 48th in per student spending. 47th in teacher pay, and we are dead last in working conditions for teachers behind every other state and the District of Columbia. Between 2012 and 2014, we have seen over a thousand teacher assistants leave our state. So now our students are crowded into larger classrooms with fewer resources. However, there remains one group that continues to be a champion for our children's education, and that is our public school teachers. Last year, the General Assembly played a shell game that gave paltry raises to our teachers and left our students without textbooks. We cannot continue starving our public schools and be a leader in innovation and education in our state. We must do better for the children of North Carolina. Today, the State Board of Education released public school performance grades, assigning a grade of A through F to each public school based on an 80-20 formula where 80% of the grade is based on student performance and 20% is based on growth. Joining us today to speak on the public school performance grades, we have Lynn Shoemaker of Public Schools First NC, um, Mark Jewell of the North Carolina Association of Educators, and Larry Nillis. Um, following them, um, we'll hear from, uh, excuse me, Senators uh, Wydell, <laughs> um, Senator McKissick, and Senator Robinson. Um, thank you very much. Guess I get to come up here first. My name is Lynn Shoemaker, and I have been a licensed public school teacher for 23 years. The only thing that these grades tell us is where the poor children go to school and where the rich children go to school. Labeling our schools based on standardized tests is abusive and ignorant of the education process and what matters most. What these grades do not reflect are the number of students who go home hungry. The only meals they eat are at school. They don't reflect that students with exceptionalities are they're now being served on a shoestring budget because of devastating cuts to public schools. It doesn't reflect their fewer classroom teacher assistants or the enormous class size that lack basic resources like textbooks and desks. And they don't reflect the failure of the state to provide quality, if any, continuing education opportunities for teachers in the classroom. Research, and those are facts, something that people don't like sometimes, show that to be successful, we need three things. The first one is that teachers um, need authentic shared decision making. And basically the state has left teachers out of the decision, ma decision making process, evident in that they have held committee and task force meetings during school days when teachers can't possibly be there. Two, an authentic learning community where teachers have the ability to create and implement innovative pedagogies without fear of reprisal, like getting a grade. And finally, collective efficacy, 
the ability to feel good as a faculty in a school about what you're doing and why you're doing it, which was pulled out from underneath them today with these school grades, which compare apples to oranges and those who have to those who have not. Our public schools, our public school teachers are not failing our students. Our state is failing our public schools. Thank you. Good afternoon. Mark Jewell, Vice President of the North Carolina Association of Educators. And on behalf of North Carolina's 95,000 um, 95, public school teachers and our 1.5 million students, I just want to reiterate what the superintendent just said a few minutes ago. We salute those 95,000 public school teachers in North Carolina and their families and the communities that are working so hard out there that are continuing to work to make North Carolina a world-class public education system. I want to make this really perfectly clear about the data that was released today. It is not indicative of the hard work that is going on out there with our public school teachers, with their families, and with their communities. Let us be clear that one letter grade that's based 80% on proficiency and only 20% on growth does not tell the hard work. 75%, if you look into this data, 75% of uh, North Carolina schools met or exceeded growth. A vast majority of our schools, over 2,000, have the majority of their teachers who exceeded growth, with only 300 or some not ach achieving growth. But what it did highlight is something that we already knew. Poverty matters. Okay. Our schools with the lowest grades has, have huge pockets of minority students. But you can't expect progress when you cut 9,000 positions while your student population increases by 33,000 students. You can't expect huge gains when you have textbooks that were cut by 76 million, classroom supplies by 46 million, teacher assistance by 3,000, pre-K, all of these re resources that provide critical assistance to our most vulnerable students. So we've got work to do out there, but I want you to look beyond the data of each school. What I am worried now is that our schools that need the best resources, the best teachers, are going to be pushing those individuals and those uh, items away. So we challenge the General Assembly that in uh, a budget that was cut by $500 million in 2013, to roll up their sleeves and look into those schools and those school districts that need the best and the brightest teachers and the most resources as a challenge to provide those resources to our educators out there. And if you look you know, at the grades, those that have the highest growth are with some of the lowest grades. Those with the highest grades quite often have the least amount of growth. So with that, um, we want you to help us get that message out there uh, and continue to spread the story that North Carolina public schools, our teachers, are not failing or our communities. That Larry Nellis, Wake County. Good afternoon, my name is Larry Nellis. I'm an eighth grade social studies teacher and the president of Wake NCAE. I'm also the parent of a kindergartner. And I think um, that's how I wanna speak about these grades most uh, particularly. If I'm a parent of a school age child, I don't think these A through F grades are particularly useful. Um, I think when I was a student myself, A through F grades, like we knew what was good and what was bad, but it was never quite clear why this thing was an A and why this thing was an F. Um, here in Wake County, the school systems put together much more useful progress reports. You can find them by Googling WCPSS school progress reports. Um, and what you see in those progress reports is information about student academic achievement as well as student growth, which are the, the two characteristics that were used to create uh, these letter grades, but you also see information about the um, makeup of the teacher core. You see information about the school climate, 
um, and you see information about leadership in the school that comes from the people who work in those schools. Um, it, as a parent, I think those are the kinds of things I want to see, um, not just um, not just labels that are potentially punitive and really quite difficult to understand. Thanks. Thank you for being here. I'm Joyce Waddell, and I represent District 40 in Charlotte. I want to speak to you briefly concerning the letter grades. I'm appalled and upset when I see letter grades given to entire schools because we have a lot of great things going on in our schools. We have great teachers, administrators who work hard each and every day. And as I looked at them, 132 schools got grades of A, 146 grades of F. No school should get grade of F. F is failing, and that should be removed, should not even be addressed, because it stigmatizes the school. It puts a label on those schools. That's not what we want for public education. Students are in there every day working hard. Teachers are working hard every day. We want to look at the positive things that are going on, and that's not what we're doing. Letter grades often tends to be punitive to people who are working hard. Think about low teacher pay and lack of funding is forcing schools to fire teaching assistants and encouraging teachers to flee to nearby states with higher starting salaries and adequate resources to succeed. We want to succeed here, and our letter grade does not indicate that because it's a punitive measure and sends a negative message. So when we think of Republicans, they're starving our education system, but they're treating teachers unfairly. We need new mechanisms to measure performance that will encourage and reward teachers who are innovating and succeeding rather than starving them off and making them feel unsuccessful. Our Republican legislators are said it said in our teachers and our students up for failure under this current system, and this must change. Education is the backbone of our economy, and North Carolina will remain competitive when employees are looking to bring jobs to a state. Without investing in public education, we must invest. And letter grades must not send a negative message. Thank you. Well, I would first like to uh, salute all of our public school teachers as well as the administrators for the work that they're doing, working with our students across the state, all 100 counties. And I think the report released today shows us that about 70 percent are doing their job. They've got a letter grade of C or better. The problem is we have about 30 percent, according to the criteria which have been used, they're either getting C's or D's, and that's deeply, deeply concerning to me. We have a state constitution that demands and requires us to provide our students in this state with a basic education. If we look at the data that was released today for traditional public schools in this state, not charter schools, about 29 percent got D's and F's. If we look at the same data for charter schools, it's about 31.5% that receive Ds and Fs. So those students, we owe them an obligation to provide adequate resources so that our students are equipped to reach their highest potential, so that our educators have access to the textbooks and aids and technology that are required so that they can teach those students effectively so they can compete for jobs when they get out. But more importantly, we need to make certain that the budget cuts that have occurred in recent years are restored and that we do better than we've done. We can't allow ourselves to become 48th among the 50 states in per pupil expenditures. That tells you right there there's something wrong with this equation. 
we ought to at least be in the middle ground of states. When you call fall the 48th, something's wrong with the level of appropriations, the commitment that's necessary for us to comply with our constitutional requirement to provide that basic education. I looked at the counties in my district, Durham County, Granville County. Over in Granville County, 45% of those schools fell in the category where they got D's and F's. Over in Durham County, it was 51.7%. It's deeply concerning. The criteria used may not be perfect. They could certainly be tweaked and revised to more appropriately take into consideration growth of the students from year to year. But more importantly, when we see these glaring statistics, we know that the trend that we've seen over the last four years of deep cuts to public education is putting us in a situation where we have a ship that's adrift at sea that perhaps needs a better captain to steer it in the right direction so that our students can get the quality of education that they need. Good afternoon. We want to thank you so very much um, for joining us here. We want to thank Lynn and Mark and where is the for Neil for being here with us because they are really the spokespersons who tell you what's going on day to day. But in light of these performance grades, we as Democrats are looking at alternatives to show that real the real performance of our schools. Quite recently, Senator Josh Stein uh, has filed legislation co-signed by some of us here that will assign more weight to student growth. That formula suggests that student achievement would be weighted at 40 percent and growth should be evaluated at 60 percent. Also, a cursory look at the data shows that many of the schools, as you heard, where, po where poverty is higher, the performance grade is lower. Many of these schools have D's and F's, and that is not fair to our students. The data shows that over 548 schools had had uh, that had 97.9% poverty, had Ds in reading scores. And over 144 schools with over 100% poverty had Fs. We must encourage growth, not stifle it, as these grades do. It's crucial that we invest in our teachers and our students, and we encourage a process that works to make our schools the very best by measuring growth above all else. A recent report by the North Carolina Public School Forum indicates that the percentage of state funding of our schools has decreased from 52.5% in 1970 to 37.3% in 2012 13. If public education were funded at the same percentage of the general fund as in 1970, our, our districts and our schools would have an additional $3.2 billion to educate our kids. We look forward to working with our colleagues in the legislature to really put teachers first and to put our students first and to do all that we can to invest adequate resources because that's what's missing when you talk about low wealth schools and areas where kids don't have what they need to perform and you don't have adequate teachers or teacher assistants to help those same children. So we're doing our children and our teachers and our entire community a disservice. So we thank you for being here and now we'll open up the floor for questions.